The White House has unveiled a plan to address gun violence and school shootings. It includes funding to train teachers to carry firearms, but does not include the president's proposal to raise the age limit for buying rifles to 21. It has been almost one month since the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Two survivors are with us now, Alfonso Calderon and David Hogg. Guys, thank you so much. It's great to see you as always. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, David, let's start with what the White House's proposal is. I'll put it up on the screen for everybody. It does not include, as we said, a plan to increase the age limit, but it does provide uh, qualified personnel, as they put it, meaning teachers with firearm training. It supports retired law enforcement and veterans um, to transition to working in schools as security guards. It urges states to allow firearm removal from threatening individuals. It creates a task force uh, to study age restrictions, and it supports the Fix Nix program by Senators Cornyn and Murphy. What do you think of the White House's proposal, David? Well, I think what the White House's proposal does is it answers basically one of the three main issues that we're trying to face here, which is mental health care, universal background checks, and just more gun control in general. And what President Trump showed when he said that he wanted to raise the age to 21 is bipartisanship and that he wanted to work together on this and save some lives. But the other thing that he showed after that is that he's no better than the all other politicians because he said, he called out other GOP members and said that you were essentially, you're owned by the NRA and that's why you don't want to take action. But then he stepped back down from where he was and that's why we're seeing this stuff. And I asked him why? show us that you're better than these other politicians, that you aren't owned by the NRA, and that you actually want to take action. Those proposals were great, but proposals without action remain proposals. Um, so, Alfonso, you were one of the students, the eight students, I believe, who actively lobbied the Florida State Legislature, and it worked. I mean, in the space of three weeks after the massacre at your school, Florida passed this you know, fairly comprehensive bill. Here's what is in that bill. They raise the minimum age to purchase a firearm to 21. They ban the sale of bump stocks. They give law enforcement greater power to seize weapons temporarily from people who are dangerous. They provide additional funding for more school security officers and they arm some teachers. How are you feeling about this today? I mean, you gotta enjoy the victories when you have them. I have to be a little bit grateful to the Florida legislature because when I went there in ta to Tallahassee a few weeks ago, it was not looking great. You know, they ignored most of our meetings. They disrespected us. But I'm glad that now they're taking the American people and the kids, especially the ones striving for change, seriously. So that said, as you guys both know, the NRA is suing Florida because of this. The NRA doesn't believe that 18-year-olds shouldn't be able to buy far firearms. They say that that is their constitutional rights. So let me uh, read to you the NRA statement. Preventing a responsible 20-year-old from purchasing the best tool for self-defense will not stop a deranged criminal intent on committing a crime. Imposing a three-day waiting period on rifle and shotgun purchases would not have stopped any of the high-profile mass shootings in recent years. What's your response, David? My response to that is Nick Cruz was 19 and legally bought his assault rifle. It's offensive that they would say that because this would have stopped him because he would legally not have been able to get this gun, but he was able to. And it's part of the reason why we had this massacre occur, occur at our school. And I know what the NRA likes to do, it, the people at the top of the NRA like to do, is they like to hide behind the Second Amen Amendment and say that this is our constitutional right, we're Americans. And what they're really trying to do is say, let us sell you more guns at an even younger age, put more people at risk, scare more people, cause more violence, kill more people, and sell more guns. Um, absolutely. To that, I have to add, when are you going to use an AR-15 for self-defense? Please explain that to me. I find it absolutely preposterous that anyone could claim that you're going to use a military-grade assault rifle in order to defend yourself, especially in schools. Because as you may know, one of our dear lost teachers here, Mr. Scott Beagle, was shot before he could even reach his classroom. It is ridiculous to assume that that is a self-defense weapon. I mean, look, you know what they would say. I mean, I've heard it a million times from the NRA is that they want to have the same firepower that the bad guy has. So if only the bad guy has the AR-15, but the good guys are prevented from buying it, that's, um, you know, a, a sort of a, an unequal um, setup that leaves them as a sitting duck. Well, I think that's just a false notion. If you look at all the other countries like, like Canada, like Sweden, and so many others that are first world countries and are 
places that have more developed gun laws and are more restrictive on gun ownership and see it more as a privilege rather than a right, they allow people to own guns just in a way more controlled way and make sure that they're still allowed to own them in a responsible and respectable way. And we want to make sure Americans can do that, too. We just don't think that mentally deranged individuals, people under the age of 21 or anyone else that has like a criminal background, for example, should be able to get a weapon. So, guys, you listen. Know, they uh, always uh, talk about the narrative. Oh. Yeah. Qu no, quickly. I'm go sorry, ahead. But go ahead, um, Al Alfonso, before I get to always, your full page. Thank you. They always talk about the narrative of good guys with guns stopping bad guys with guns. But to that I say, what if the bad guys couldn't get the guns because we have comprehensive gun laws? Mm. Because that's not what we have in this country right now. And it's very evident because of what happened at my school right there. Okay, so let me get to the action that you all are taking. You've taken out this full page ad in the New York Times. I'll read just a portion of it. And this is about what's gonna happen on March 24th and the march, the national march that you're hoping for. Please help us adopt a school in your area who wants to attend the March for Our Lives in Washington and pay for them to do it. Donate buses, flights, train tickets, donate your time or your talent, or donate directly to March for Our Lives. For this to be really never again, we all have to stand together. What are you both hoping for on March 24th? What we're hoping for is comprehensive bipartisan work where we come together as Americans and not debate each other as Democrats and Republicans, but discuss this as the Americans that we are. Because at the end of the day, we all bleed the same American blood. And we need to realize that, come together and work together to save our children and save our future. And that's what we want to do on March 24th. Alfonso, last word. Absolutely. Okay, there you, you know, go. We just want to give an open. In <laughs> so, oh, I'm so sorry, sorry you guys, Thank about you. the delay. I know that it makes it super awkward, but you got your message across, and obviously we will be watching you on March 24th and all of the days up until then. Thank you both very much for being here with us today. You have a good one.